Hi, my name is Malcolm Keith, and I teach at Rochester Institute of Technology in New York. I'm also a professor at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, California. I'm here to talk to you today about whether grad school makes sense for you after finishing your undergrad degree in graphic communications. Do you know what grad school is? I assume you do, but let's just go over a few details. So when you go to grad school, you're signing up for advanced education, and it tends to be focused a bit more on problem solving, what is commonly called research. You probably did some undergraduate research, but the difference between undergrad research and graduate research has to do with the detail and complexity. And more importantly, if it's original research and does it contribute new knowledge to the field. At the graduate level, we frequently work in smaller groups, more of a cohort model, and therefore you get a lot of interaction with your fellow classmates. Sometimes grad students work on research projects together to learn more or to solve a particular problem. This may include various investigations, experimentations, or interactions with survey populations. You also get a lot more interaction with your research advisor, so you tend to develop a close professional relationship with this advisor, which is helpful when you graduate. For many students, grad school is a life experience. A typical master's degree requires one to two years beyond the bachelor's. If you're looking at a doctorate too, that, then it's more like two to five years. Most students get a master's degree first and then go on to a doctorate, though it is possible to go straight from an undergrad into a doctoral program. In the graphic communication field, we need students with advanced degrees to help fill professor positions in the future. So is grad school right for you? That's the big question. And there's not one single right answer. It really depends. I do not believe grad school is the right decision for everyone. For many students, you have the education you need to have a fulfilling career. For most graphic communications jobs, you do not need a master's degree for success or advancement and leadership. So you need to think very carefully if it makes sense for you. You want to consider many factors, including your financial situation, your stage in life, your career goals, and your love for learning. For some students, it will be the best decision you ever make. So what are some good questions to ask? Well, do you want to do more schooling, either now or later? Will your career goals benefit from a graduate degree? Are you an insatiably curious person? In other words, do you just love learning? Graduate education definitely needs to provide either a short or long-term benefit. Otherwise, all you're doing is increasing your student debt, which is not good for anyone. As to whether to consider graduate school now or in the future is an important question. There are certainly pros and cons to both timings. Only you can decide the timing and what makes sense for you. Some of the reasons why you choose to continue your schooling right after your undergrad might include, it can be difficult to interrupt a career later. So if you know you want to get a master's degree, then doing it right away makes sense. You're already in a learning mode and you'll have that advanced degree earlier in your career. Of course, the cons are equally compelling. You'll likely learn better after working for a bit because you have more context about what the work environment really requires. You also may find that some employers offer sponsorships for graduate education if they perceive a corporate benefit, making it a lot more affordable. And another consideration is that your interests may change or might develop, and therefore waiting might make sense as well so you can determine what to study. As one who is wrapping up your undergraduate, you have a lot of options for graduate education. As a graphic student, you already have strong skills in production management. You know all the Adobe software and you have various talents. Therefore, you may choose to study in one of several fields. You could go towards art or design and get a master's of art or a master's of fine art, an MFA. You can go more the business route, pursuing an MBA in management or marketing, or even data analytics. You could go the more technical route and get a master's of science degree 
And that's where you're getting more into the science, technology, workflow, and equipment side of the field of graphic communication. Or you might want to get a master's of education and become a teacher, which I can tell you firsthand is a very rewarding career. So where do you go for your master's degree? Well, there's lots of things to consider. Geography being an important one. The program and research reputation of the school might be another. Maybe the faculty advisor that you will work with. Or how much is it going to cost? And what's the coursework look like? There are a lot of great options out there, and this is not intended to be an exhaustive, exhaustive list by any means. However, I have a few samples on this slide. The top grouping includes the more traditional graphic communication options, focusing more on the technical and the teaching side. If you want to look at a Master's of Science, you may wish to consider Rochester Institute of Technology, where I work. I'll be telling you a little bit about our program in a moment. However, there are many other great technical and or teaching options, including Clemson University in South Carolina, Western Michigan University in Michigan. And these three are among the most well-known in the US for graduate education on the technical side, but there certainly are many other options. Um, you may also wanna consider related technical fields, including packaging science or cybersecurity or computer science. And there are many schools that have fine programs in these areas. Next is the MBA. I've had many graduates pursue an MBA, which is available at numerous universities in every state in the country. The advantage of an MBA provides the ability to work in any industry. It is a great way to strengthen your business and management acumen and remain close to home. And then if you like more of the design or the creative side, there are many great design schools out there. Every state has very good design schools and offer MFAs. So that may be a direction to explore. The best approach is to explore various options, look at the websites, talk to alumni, and get some input from your undergrad professors. Well, how much does a graduate degree cost? That's a great question, because most graduate degrees are more expensive than an undergraduate degree at least on a per unit or per credit hour basis. For the most part, your living expenses will be relatively similar to your undergraduate expenses, depending on your stage in life and willingness to have roommates. However, your tuition is typically going to be greater for graduate education. A typical Master's of Science or Master of Art or MBA is 30 to 45 semester hours. However, full-time at grad school is normally only 12 hours per semester compared to 15 hours as an undergrad. So that 30 to 45 credits could take you anywhere from 12 months to about two full years, depending on the program. MFA programs often take a little longer. According to educationdata.org, in 2021, the average master's degree cost a bit more than $66,000. Of course, that is not cheap. It's a lot of money. That may be as much as you paid for all four years of your undergraduate degree. So you need to weigh carefully if it makes sense for you financially, considering your career goals and objectives. You likely know that public universities typically have different in-state and out-of-state tuitions, which impacts how much you'll pay for tuition. If you're looking at a public university, look for schools in the state you live or in states offering reciprocal in-state tuition. As an alternate, you may choose to move and work in the state to establish residency prior to starting grad school. Private schools, in contrast, are typically more expensive, but often have more liberal scholarships available. It's worth exploring the scholarship packages at private schools, particularly well-established universities with large endowments, because they can offer scholarships that state schools don't offer as readily. So how are you going to pay for this master's degree? As I see it, you have four options. You can pay as you go. This usually involves tapping into a college savings account, or you have supporters that are willing to pay for your graduate degree. You may also be able to work during a summer semester to try to fund the next semester. 
Number two, you can certainly do the student loan route, though I'm not a fan of incurring a large amount of student debt. I've just seen too many students come out with large student loans, which burden them for years. However, if you minimize those student loans and have a strategic plan for paying them off, that may be an appropriate strategy as well. Third, you'll want to leverage scholarships. There are quite a number of scholarships available, particularly in that three to $5,000 range. And if you link four or five of those together, it can really be helpful in cutting in your tuition. And something you should definitely explore is called a graduate assistantship. Usually these are research assistantships or teaching assistantships and are essentially grad student program where you get paid while working at the university. Graduate assistantships are, sim are something you'll definitely want to explore as you look to funding your master's degree. Let's now use RIT as a case study. You know that I work for Rochester Institute of Technology and we have a graduate program called Masters of Science in Print and Graphic Media Science. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this program and that will be useful as you compare it with other programs. Because this is a, is a Master of Science degree, it is a technology focused degree focused on print and graphic media. We study the science underpinning technologies and conduct applied research which leads to new approaches and improved understanding. If you're not familiar with Rochester Insti Institute of Technology, we have a rich history teaching graphic communications, celebrating our 100 year anniversary in 2022. Our faculty are particularly strong in color science, color management, materials and printing, automation, and workflow applications. While these, these are broad concepts, there are many directions one might investigate and develop expertise. RIT is a global university. We have five campuses outside of the United States. There are thousands of RIT alumni worldwide, yet we still have a relatively small campus with world-class labs right here in Rochester. With a large international student population, RIT provides a nice opportunity to have international exposure in an intimate setting at a relatively small campus. Let's look at a few more examples where students might develop their research capabilities at RIT. We are focused on innovation and leadership, which means we help students graduate with expertise in one or more innovative areas. You can see from this slide, as an RIT student, you may be engaged in researching the use of printing to solve important graphic and functional challenges. We also research the use of digital technologies to improve marketing efforts and data-driven decision-making. We're interested in investigating how to better engage consumers through digital technologies. And our research efforts focus on automation to improve print and graphic production efficiencies at scale. We do this by investigating and understanding the scientific principles associated with these research areas and develop appropriate models which may or may not turn into innovative applications. Are you interested in a different graphic communication application? No problem. At RIT, we encourage thinking beyond our existing research strengths. Here are a few RIT facts. RIT is a private university. It is an R1 university, which means that it has been recognized by the Carnegie Commission for its high level of research. RIT is in Rochester, New York, which is the home of Kodak, Xerox, Bosch & Lomb, and a number of other imaging companies. In Rochester, there's a rich scientific community around us. This provides us with the opportunities both on campus and in the scientific community, the ability to surround ourselves with like-minded and curious technologists. Our department is called Graphic Media Science and Technology, and we're in the College of Engineering Technology, a STEM-focused college. The degree itself is 30 semester hours to graduate, which can be done in as few as 12 months, but is typically completed in 18 to 24 months, depending on the student interest and the research complexities. The retail price in 2021-2022 was 52,000 for tuition, and about 14,000 for annual living expenses. Visit RIT's tuition fee website for the most current numbers. 
Now, because of our strong endowments, students in this particular program, the Master of Science in Print and Graphic Media Science, receive a 30% discount on tuition. How does that happen? Well, this is what you want to look for from private universities, as sometimes they can offer unique scholarships associated with special endowments. If you throw on top of that any other scholarship, whether need-based or merit-based, or a graduate assistantship, you often find that the cost of attendance may even be lower than a public university. So don't be afraid to ask these kinds of questions to determine if there are any scholarships available. Often you'll need to apply before you know the full financial picture, but it's worth the effort to determine the full scholarship packages available. Also, make sure you explore industry and service-focused scholarships. There are many scholarships available through the FTA, the Print and Graphics Scholarship Foundation, or PGSF, and other industry associations. So if you can start adding in $2,000 here, $5,000 there, before you know it, the cost of attendance is much more reasonable. Throw in a co-op during the summer or a graduate assistantship and you may find that the graduate degree is relatively affordable. Now you may be wondering, where exactly is Rochester, New York? Well, it is in what is known as upstate New York. Which, is, which essentially means that it is up the state from New York City, or better described as Western New York. It's a lovely area, abundant in natural beauty. One of my favorite places is Letchworth State Park, just 45 minutes south of campus. Rochester does get a little chilly in the winter because we get the lake effect snows off of Lake Ontario, but winter activities are abundant with an outdoor skating rink right on campus and ample trails to explore whether on skis, snowshoes, or just your hiking boots. RIT is a great hockey school too, which is one way to enjoy the winters if you prefer to stay indoors. In the fall, the trees turn vibrant colors and our spring and summers offer a wonderful array of things to do. Rochester experiences all four seasons. Now there are a number of outstanding cities and sites within close proximity to Rochester. You're just six hours or less by car from Niagara Falls, two large Canadian cities, Toronto and Montreal, and of course, New York City, Boston, Washington DC, and Philadelphia are all within a six hour drive. So there's plenty to see near Rochester, New York on weekends and during academic breaks. When you look at our labs, you'll see some familiar equipment, but also you'll see some instrumentation that may not be so familiar. At the graduate level, we're looking at pressing and pushing knowledge. We're looking at trying to uncover new information. We conduct experiments. We look for cause and effect relationships. We try to model the phenomena we observe. We have all types of printing and imaging tools, including flexographic, gravure, offset, and screen printing. We have inkjet, electrophotographic, and other digital capabilities. And we have access to more advanced deposition tools and measurement instrumentation if needed too. You will have no trouble diving in and doing research at RIT. In wrapping up, I wanna take just one more moment to summarize RIT's Master of Science in Print and Graphic Media Science. We consider ourselves flexible and focused. What this means is that we have some focused research expertise, as previously discussed, but as a graduate student, if you come and you have a specific research interest that fits within the scope of print and graphic media science, we are happy to work with your student interests, assuming the literature supports further exploration. We will gladly tailor your technical electives and research topic to your individual interests. As a graduate student, we will help you take your expertise and apply it in industry through a co-op or our career services that we provide on campus. We offer three different culminating experience options, thesis, capstone, and research applications. You can contact me directly if you'd like to learn more about these three options, but essentially there are three different forms of applied research resulting in different deliverables. That flexibility allows students to select the best option that helps them achieve their career interests 
as well as the appropriate timing for these academic studies. Finally, I want to mention that we offer scholarships and assistantships at RIT. So do not hesitate to ask the, uh, those types of questions as you explore graduate education. Hopefully this presentation has given you a little more understanding about what graduate education is, where and how you might pursue graduate education, and of course, give you a little bit of information about RIT's Master's of Science degree in Print and Graphic Media Science. Hopefully, one day soon, you will be like one of these master's degree graduates, if that makes sense for you and your career goals. If you'd like to learn more about our program, RIT's Master of Science in Print and Graphic Media Science, I encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn. Just Google RIT-GMST and LinkedIn, and you should find us. Also, be sure to explore our Master of Science program website at the link shown here, or merely Google Print and Graphic Media Science at RIT. Um, you may contact me directly at the email address shown here. I encourage you to go ahead and reach out to me if I can answer any additional questions. Thanks for your time.